<laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to game number three in between Vam and the Viper. This is the playoffs of EGC Golden League in the group stage, Group B, Viper versus Vam. Spawning on the left side, it is Vam playing as the Roos in red. And on the right side, who do we got, Ozzy? Spawning in on the right side, in the color blue, playing as the French. It is, of course, the one, the only, the Viper. Beautiful sport for him as well. Double, look, hold on a minute. Have a look at the spawns that we got for both of these players. C can can somebody tell me how to wall? Because right now I'm going to need to know because these guys <laughs> are going to be playing connect the dots. Look on that mini map right now. They are literally, look at this damn thing. Look at this spawn. Okay, you know, we talked about this before that there was the potential that this game might go long. If there's anything that motivates this game to go long, it is the fact that that is the easiest wallable base you will ever get. And again, over on the other side, it is the exact same thing. We can see just how easy these are going to be to wall. All right, I I'm going to estimate this game goes for 47 minutes. That is my estimate. So, uh, you know, get ready. Get ready for it. Probably not going to be the case. Probably going to be a six-minute game, but uh, <laughs> we'll, um we'll see. We'll see. I'm going with 29. I, I, I got a feel that uh, Viper is going to focus so much on Castellation. I don't see this game going uh, beyond 30 minutes. This being said, there is a great boar spot in the middle for Vamp. So if he wants to play Feudal Age Aggression with a boar and a proxy base, that is a perfect scenario for him. Yeah, yeah, that's a really good point. You know, there's, there's a great comment in the chat right now uh, by uh, Andre Fairlight. He says, Dry Arabia is the only open map AoE4 has right now, no Kappa. I, I got to agree with that. I got to agree with that. Every single other map just seems to be very closed off. I mean, you take a look at the maps in the map pool at the moment. We've got uh, Mongolian Heights, King of the Hill. Uh, you've got French Pass. You've got Hill and Dale. All of these maps are very, very closed off maps. And then you've got Lipany, which technically is an open map, but often the cliffs together with the forests will spawn very natural choke points that are easily walled up. And then you've got Highview which is a map that seems to last very, very often up, upwards of 30 minutes and is very easily walled off, as you can see here, just because of the high amounts of forest. So I, the only map that's left, I guess, is Altai, which is once again, very easily walled off in the most recent update. Uh, and then, then there's Dry Arabia, which is the last remaining map. I feel like your standards of openness is just a little too high. Imagine if we had Arena in the ranked map pool, suddenly you would feel like, hey, Lipony is a lot more open than I thought. But yeah, I agree with you. Arabia is really the only map for rewarding yourself is really difficult. Looks like we do have two scouts over here by Viper, by the way. Taking out the majority of those wolves. Looks like Vam is gonna yoink one though, so he's up to 230 bounty. Oh, Vam got the yeah, other. Can them. Vam got the hey, second geez, one as a... well. He did a good job. He's up to 255 already. We're barely shy of four minutes, and that's a damn good bounty to have. Normally, if you're going to be hitting that 250 mark by five minutes, you're going to be happy uh, with yourself. But uh, yeah, he's got plenty of sheep here as well. Still no wheelbarrow coming through just yet for either player at this point. Uh, but we can see the landmarks are well and truly underway. Four scouts out for Wham with a fifth one coming through. Does that mean that we are going to be seeing a potential professional scouts? Or aggression towards the gold mine. We have seen this before. Try to send out all four scouts to that gold mine because if you can hit the gold income of the French player as he's going up, you can potentially prevent him from opening with a knight and force him to open with a horseman instead. Now, looking at those red dots though, they're moving all the way to the far north. So you gotta wonder if it's actually gonna be pro scouts here. Yeah, it could indeed be. We can see he's very close to it. He's at 273. He's gonna kill that last sheep. Has he actually killed that last sheep and he's just five? Is he? No, it's... Yeah, it is professional scouts. He, he did... Look, he actually did a sell. He, he sold... Yeah, he sold some of his wood. It is indeed going to be professional scouts. So very rare to see, but we're going to be actually seeing boar oh. plus professional scouts. This is greedy. And I absolutely love it. Greedy. And I, I like... This is the all-in style eco approach. Like, what I mean by this is that you're assuming that Viper isn't going to put up a ton of aggression towards you. Like, you're assuming that Viper is going to play greedy and you're like, okay, I'm going to play this one even greedier than Viper could. Now, this is a concern because this clearing is something that Viper is going to see. Oh, no, wham. Disaster oh. on that boar. 
Oh no, the boar coming in and Viper going to deny it. You can see that Wham tried his best to come in, so the, the boar is going to be going down. Uh, but Wham going to be taking and clearing, uh, or rather Viper going to be taking the gold away from Wham there. So just when he thought he was going to be able to get up to that nice 365 gold that he'd been waiting for, he's heading back to the pavilion and he's got no boar to show for it. This is the consequence of playing for that greedy opening. Uh, you get punished. And it was super greedy. I mean, professional scouts into boar basically means that you want all the hunt that's accessible all across the map. But you don't have any army to protect those scouts that are carrying in the carcasses with. You don't have any army to protect those villagers with that are moving out towards the boar. So if Viper puts up any level of aggression, you're going to find yourself very much exposed. And that is exactly what happened over here. And you see, Viper is not playing a super aggressive game either. So he just had a couple of knights around here and he's realizing that Oh yeah, my opponent is trying to play greedy over here. I should do the same thing, but put up some aggression here with my knights. Villager almost going down there on the wood line for Wham. He's able to get it inside the safety of that wooden fortress, but we can see he was coming around for seconds, and now Viper out in the middle of the map looking to fight, try and track those scouts. Indeed, he spots them out, and I suspect he'll be turning around with those knights and looking to dish out some damage at this stage of the game. We'll see exactly what he does. as a knight going down. Big mistake for Viper right there. That is a huge loss for his French. Uh, the fact that he's French, he's obviously got access to chivalry, able to heal back up to full health, and now... He's going to be one one less night throughout the rest of this game. Uh, looks like the scout is going to drop off the carcass. Nice little move over there by Wham to save that one scout. So far, Wham is going to be able to bring in those first couple of carcasses, so it's not as bad as it looks. And looking at Wham, look at those resources. He's not far away from Castle Age. This is like super old school. It is, this is basically the build that players used in the day of the dreaded Roos horse archers. And Viper, as expected, Going for an eco-focused approach, two town centers in Feudal Age. Yeah, no real surprise here from Viper. We can actually see he's already getting his eco upgrades as well. Double broad axes through, horticulture also coming through now, and plenty of deer making their way back for Wham. So both players looking to play it a little bit greedier, invest in that economy. You know, we used to see back in the good old days, people just be very aggressive. You were spending all of your resources on making military. But these days, it seems to be like most players are just spending their resources on acquiring more resources. We're investing, we're greedy. And that's exactly what is happening here for both of these guys. Double Town Center already out. And uh, and Wham, obviously, investing heavily in his food stocks. That's exactly it. The thing is that players have gotten so much better at defending that it's really difficult to punish a player for playing greedy. So people start to figure out, hey, if my opponent is playing greedy, I might as well do it. Looks like Viper is adding a couple more knights himself, also grabbing chivalry. So he's still trying to limit the access to those uh, carcasses. He's trying to limit access to relics in the future because he's probably aware of the fact that Wham playing one town center is likely going up to Castle Age in the next couple of minutes. And indeed that's the case. The Abbey is coming in, followed by triple archer ranges. So good old fashioned horse archer gameplay over here by Wham. So the question is, what does Viper do to counter this play? What what does he look to go into? Obviously, Knights are going to be an option. And we've seen players before go for the Royal Institute as one of the potential landmarks for them to go up to the second a or the third age. Uh, typically, you would oh, expect see to see... That? Yeah, he oh. came in and just took a, a couple of them. And you can see the town center. He popped all of the villages in. He's like, hold on a minute. Cheeky. I'm missing something. Yeah, but unfortunately, not going to be able to spot it out, though, because of the, uh, the, the stealth forest. Oh, Viper is moving for a board, though. You gotta love all these mind games between the players. Wham snuck in with a couple of scouts, stole a couple of carcasses, and Viper's gonna be like, hey, you helped me kill that boar, I might as well take it. A lot of mind games going on here. Now, Viper's gonna need at least two towers on that boar, otherwise he's gonna get punished very easily by the horse archers. I think he's also going to be needing to grab the uh, the arrow slits as well because those horse archers are definitely going to be dishing out a lot of pain. And indeed, we do see that forward outpost coming in literally quite outside the enemy's base. And this is dangerous because just remember, even if the arrow slits go through, the horse archers are going to be enable or enough to one-shot the villagers. And now that's all fine and dandy, but then consider the fact that there are a lot of scouts out. So these villagers, look, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't think they're too long for this world. I, I'm not sure if Viper's done the math on this enough uh, to know that this is probably a pretty dangerous spot for him to be in. I, I guess he's just taking this gamble over here, knowing that he's going to be ahead in villager count anyways. So he can afford to take this gamble. It's a high upside play. 
there's a chance that he's going to lose two, three, potentially five villagers on the middle of the map over there. But if he doesn't, the value that he's getting out of that boar is insane. And as you pointed out before, it's all about investing your resources into gaining more resources. And that's what we're seeing over here from Viper. And now coming in, Wham is going to be spotting this out. He runs into a uh, an outpost full of five villagers and he says, hold on a minute. I'm going to be turning my attention towards that very shortly. Uh, but behind the scenes, we can see he's actually looking to pick up relics. The first of the uh, of the, the Warry Monks is going to be making its way out. And is Viper going for survival techniques as well? So Viper really looking to get all of the upgrades. He's got forestry, survival techniques, and of course got plus one on his wood collecting as well as his food gathering. I love that. If you consider the price of survival techniques for the French, it's minimal. Like one scout once again yoinking one carcass over there from Viper's Town Center. But yeah, the price of that upgrade for the French is very tiny. And the value that you're getting out of that is massive because you are going to deplete that boar a little faster. That warrior monk has to give up on that one relic over here and wham, yet to pick up his first relic in this one, yet to contest that boar, and Viper is on the way to Castlage as well. So this Castlage advantage for uh, wham is disappearing quite rapidly. Yeah, Viper's still out on this boar at this point in time. He's going to be catching a, a, a warrior monk in the middle of the map, and that's not only going to delay uh, the relics from being picked up, it delays everything because the sacred sites come after the relics, uh, and it's also just going to be a very costly affair. But now, in the middle of the map, we see that warrior monk standing there with six health, the knight hunting, looking for that single warrior monk, not going to be able to find it today, manages to make its way safely through the stealth forest, and we can see Viper coming around. He knows it's coming through. Don't do it to him, Viper. Don't do it to him. He's going to be making his way through. He's looking for it. He spots it. He gets the joust out. He's heading straight for it. See you later, mate. Back to the pavilion. The relic gets dropped. Good night, sweet prince. Oh, that must be frustrating for Vam because keep in mind that he doesn't have any gold miners. He doesn't have any relics garrison. So every single warrior monk that's lost that might have to trigger a new transaction from that golden gate just to be able to replenish that. And Viper now dropping his own monastery. He's ready to go for those relics. The army for Vam is getting scary though. I mean, we're looking at 18 horse archers, so Viper could easily face a ton of punishment coming in from those. If he's yet to switch into food archers, he's just not building the ranges for that. And it looks like the horse archers, instead of killing the villagers, decide to attack a blacksmith. Yeah, so at, at this point in time, though, uh, we are going to see plenty of horse archers begin to move up, and you can see the villagers on the backside going to have to fall back from here. Want to avoid any potential harm uh, that comes in, but more horse archers is going to be the name of the game here. And uh, upgrades coming through. And this is what I was talking about. You know, the, the scouts together with the horse archers. Horse archers going to guaranteed kill the villagers. And the, and the scouts going to guaranteed siege down this outpost. We can see them moving up. He's trying to take out the horse archers and do meaningful damage here uh, before he loses those villagers. So definitely buying himself a bit of time here. Wallalol over towards the west side of the map. Knight not going to be collected. He's going to fall back and then turn his attention back towards it. But now we can see those villagers all losing their lives. And he's traded away five villagers for what seems to be a little bit of a, a tempo game so three or four oh, villagers oh my no. lord he made it made it how did he get out of there with three villagers these guys have got their wheelbarrows out that's for sure Ram probably wasn't focusing over there he was trying to burn down the mill or something but yeah in that case that's great value for viper traded two villagers for what could have been probably six seven eight hundred food even from that board that's pretty reasonable trade over here for viper his army still looking quite concerning though only at seven as opposed to 37 from his opponent and yeah, it's about 700 food consumed from that boar all by Viper. Yeah, so I, I still feel like it's a pretty decent trade for Viper considering he managed to get out uh, three of those villages. I can't believe that they somehow survived. I guess he was in the stealth forest, so, you know, things got a little bit mixed. But uh, now Viper going to be under attack once again. Wham! Going to be mo moving in with a pretty decent mass. This is a, a large mass that is building over here. And Viper, I'm starting to worry, worry for him. He's on 11 uh, military population compared to the 41 of Wham! But Viper has a critical eco lead over here. Now, Vam is picking up relic number three and four, so that's going to help a lot for Vam. But, oh, Vam has a second town center. Now Ooh. it's looking good for him because he doesn't want to fall behind more in villager count. He needs that second TC. Now that he has it, suddenly he's not going to fall behind that much in eco, and his army is looking really sharp. Two groups of horse archers we're now looking at, and Viper dropping a defensive castle right in the middle of his base might feel the necessity of that because there's a chance that the horse archers will at some point just commit. 
Yeah, you can tell he's an Age of Empires 2 player, can't you? Dropping just these random keeps in your base and, and just knowing that it's going to be useful at some point. So I might as well do it. But we see the fifth and final relic getting picked up now for Wham. He's going to be able to collect all five relics and oh, another raid coming over here. Wham's looking pretty decent in this game. I'm going to be honest with you. All of a sudden, Viper looking like he might be on shaky ground. Yeah, this is so far the best game for Wham over here because he's grabbing quite a lot of villager picks on the left side. He could do the same thing on the right side and he's gonna have to start using that mobility aspect because as you pointed out, the base of Viper is well defendable, so is the one for Wham with all those walls. But Viper hasn't walled himself yet, which means that all those horse archers can just dive in every once in a while and pick off a couple of villagers. Knights are now actually depleting those numbers on the left though and this is the biggest problem for Wham. If you're playing with like three, four groups of horse archers, you have to babysit them a lot. And if you look away for a second, you lose a bunch of valuable units like that. Beautiful walls now beginning to come out for Wham. I got to say, I love this. And interestingly, we never saw any walls in the early game, despite both players having such easily wallable bases. But Wham looking to secure up his third of the map. He's got his nice walls going across here. Keep in mind the Rus walls, they're not able to build the stone ones. They get access to fortified palisade walls, which have got a little bit more health, take a little bit less time to build, and also are cheaper. Uh, but uh, definitely a, an interesting trade-off that they get. It looks like Ram is also crawling up with some of those wooden fortresses, and you see Viper is flanking around a little bit here, coming for a two-pronged attack, but you got that wooden fortress out there, so there is a bit of a buffer over here for Ram to retreat, and that is exactly what's going to happen. Ram also has started grabbing some upgrades for those warrior monks, so the Saint's Blessing is going to be indeed a blessing for those horse archers. Yeah, Wham well, looking pretty decent. Keep in mind, he's behind by about 24 villagers at this point in time. Uh, but he does have the five relics working for him. He's got the second town center up as well. And he's able to repel back this force from the Viper. So managing to maintain tempo, managing to maintain map control. And he's obviously got wooden fortress out with sprinkles uh, on them already. So he is in a decent spot, but Viper running out of gold now. He's going to have to be looking towards a secondary source of gold. Where does he go from here? because uh, there is a lot of wooden fortresses that are pushed up. He might actually have to look towards this gold mine on the front side, which could be a bad position for him. Yeah, that could be trouble. So now you see those food archers are actually taking good fight against those horse archers out there. The other concern for Viper is that he has to start transitioning into farms as well, because obviously he was on the board, but he had to pull his villagers back. And with professional scouts for Wham, he picked up most of the carcasses from all across the map. So Wham, he could technically still move out towards that boar. In fact, I think he might be taking that boar, actually. And Vam has a lot of food to work with as compared to Viper, who is going to have to start transitioning to farms. Are we able to take a look at Viper's guild hall? I'm assuming he went for a guild hall. Uh, yep. There it is. Oh, where it is? Where is it? I'm looking for it. It might be on the south side of his base. There it is. Yeah, Over yeah on the, the right the side. East. The right. There it is. Oh, he's just Zero. cashed out. He, he's, he must be cashing out. Sometimes we do see players look to do this kind of quick cash out, but Viper coming in on the base of his opponent. Looking to do a bit of a raid, keep that village account down. You know what it's all about, suppressing that number, keeping it down. Uh, but uh, now going to be falling back from that position. You can see the Knights and Lancers, or Knights and Early Knights, are going to fight it out against each other. Going to be dishing out some damage, but unfortunately, Wham getting caught a little bit here. But now, hold on a minute, Viper, got to be careful here as a lot of horse archers have just shown up. Yeah, I love the tower placement over there by Wham. And you see, Viper is aware that he can't really win a battle right now, so he's just trying to delay the opponent at this point. And Wham is forced to pursue. Wham is still lacking the second attack upgrade on those horse archers, and that's going to hurt. And I think he's also lacking Boyar's Fortitude, so still a lot of upgrades to be grabbed. But he's got five relics. Oh, no, that tower isn't going up, though. Yeah, that is. there is only one thing going up, and that is the villager deaths. That is, that is what it is. Uh, but um, Wham... His military numbers looking pretty healthy at this point in time. He did finally pick up those idle uh, horse archers that were chilling out for uh, for quite some time. But uh, yeah, Viper looking pretty good. He managed just to maintain decent control. But remember, I, ideally, when we head into this late game position, Viper needs to be ahead. He's ahead by about 24 villages, but I don't know if it's enough of a difference here uh, over Wham when the late game hits. Especially because Wham has five relics and two sacred sites. It is a 700 passive gold per minute we're looking at. And the Viper's resources are more than exposed. So the moment Wham is done cleaning up those forts at the back of his base, he's going to start moving up with the horse archers. And you see, now we have some knights in the party as well, which will make it much more difficult for Viper's archers to take good fights over here. Candle Saddle is on the way for Viper, so he's going to buff those knights up a tiny bit. But maybe, just maybe, this is the moment where Wham is starting to move towards those gold mines to start doing some damage. 
We see double upgrades coming through for Wham as well. He's looking to get plus two ranged attack, plus two ranged defense as well. It's going to help him out a fair bit. And we can see Viper down on this south side, trying to break through these walls. But keep in mind, these are fortified. And so it means the Knights on the front line going to be able to tank it up. And look at this. Wham looking incredible. How many units does he have out here? Oh my lord, that is a lot of units now beginning to come out for Wham. He's got scouts. He's got knights. He's got, he's got those warrior monks as well working together in tandem with, of course, that big mass of horse archers on the backside. And he's looking very happy and healthy. He has completely walled up his third of the map, and there is going to be no contest that Viper can offer with regard to any form of penetrating raid. Yeah, that's exactly it. And Wham needs to start turning this numbers advantage into damage done on Viper's eco. Because, as you said, right now it's looking like a relatively even game eco-wise, if you consider the relics and sacred sites as well for Wham. But Wham, of course, wants to work towards winning the game here. And right now he's got a critical mass to dive in. Like, Viper is sitting at 14 archers, 10 knights, and 4 arbaletry, as opposed to... What is a deadly combination of knights and horse archers over here? Now with the attack upgrade, Boyar's to just now finishing up, so you're suddenly going to have that critical mass of uh, units for Vam that you needed, and you can start thinking about diving in and evening out that military count. A lot of Siege Workshops coming down for Wham, and you know what that means. He's thinking about going to Imperial. He's going to be looking to put that High Armory down in between all of those Siege Workshops and keep it safe, and he'll be heading into what I suspect would only be a big, big mass of Bombards. Uh, Wham, obviously able to generate or create, train, let's use that word. He's able to, to train Bombards at a much cheaper amount than uh, his his uh, other civilizations. But uh, he's got to be careful not to get caught. Boyar's Fortitude still yet to come in. You can see those units are going to be falling back until it does come in. It's, it's important that he fights with it. It's an extra 20 health for each of his units that he's got out on the field at the moment. Interestingly, no Spearmen coming out from Viper at this point. Just going to be mixing in Arbolatria, as you mentioned earlier, as well as more Knights. Yeah, it looks like Vam is waiting for that upgrade to come in. He saw that gold mine out there, so he knows Viper's got a lot of exposed eco. But what I would love to see now from Vam is looping around to the south, because Viper's army is slow moving, especially with these archers. Vam is building a defensive castle, so that should give him enough buffer. And if now Vam moves his force to the right and flanks around to the food eco, he could do a ton of damage. Instead, decides to take this fight in the middle, and this is now a pretty favorable fight for him with those archers missing from the battle. Keep in mind, the Arbolatria is still standing by on those backsides. So any long fight that happens, they're, they're going to be decimating those night numbers. But uh, Boyer's Fortitude finally coming in now for Wham, and he is almost clear for takeoff to that Imperial Age. The Guildhall, 980 gold coming through now for Viper. Uh, so he might be thinking about a bit of an Imperial himself. He's started to transition over towards farms. We'll take a look and see how many he's got out. Definitely seems like his uh, transition has definitely been underway uh, because his food economy at the moment sitting at about 2,000 food a minute. Yeah, look at that. There yeah, is plenty of farms. Oh, my seven. lord. Yeah, that is a craygasm right there if I've ever seen one. That is a lot of farms. On the contrary, if you look at Vam, only 700 food per minute, he is yet to transition to a substantial amount of farms, and that's a problem. You see, he's starting to pop out traps, and I get the feel that he's not using that mobility advantage that he has uh, enough. I feel like he's respecting Viper too much over here. He doesn't want to overcommit because he's afraid that Viper might have something else behind this one. The reality is that he could do a ton of damage with the army he currently has. If he moves to the left side, he could intercept those gold miners. Maybe Vam is playing this one a little too passively because, yeah, sure enough, he's banking up resources for Imperial, but so is Viper. Yeah, really good point. And Viper starting to build up a decent mass here of military as well. He's overtaken Wham. He's got the trebuchet out, which means he's able to push out. And now we can see the uh, the emplacements coming through on those outposts as well. Just looking to defend it up, trench up this position a little bit more. And uh, Wham going to be thinking about Imperial. You can see he's about 400 food off it, but he is stacking up plenty of gold at this point. He's going to be able to age up and have about 2k to spare at this point. But speaking of Imperials, Viper going to be going up. It looks like the College of Artillery going to be his aim or his, uh, his landmark of choice here. Yeah, the College of Artillery is now coming in here. A couple of Knights do get intercepted on the left side. That's good value over here. You don't want Viper to reach that critical mass of Royal Knights, and Viper was getting close to that. It looks like in the middle, we do have that castle being exposed, though, but it's going to get taken down, and the Trebs might soon follow, actually. If Viper sees those Trebuchets, that could be a ton of damage done, but I don't think that he has a scout in that army to spot them with, so it looks like the Trebs will be safe. That is a lot of villagers in the north, though, for Viper, and I think Vam might be heading that way. Oh, yeah, he's heading that yeah. way. 
Yeah, Viper got to be careful here. You can see Wham moving up towards that position. A lot of villagers up there. We talked about it a bit earlier. The fact that, oh, he gets scared off by a single outpost. Wham reaches Imperial Age. Viper going up. But is Viper going up with like three villagers on his landmark? What is going on? This landmark has been building for a long time. Uh, I'm sure we can find it, but Viper got to be careful not to engage those forces. There we go. It's just going to be eight villagers. I think he had one villager on it, and th those seven villagers just joined from, from the incoming party of, of villagers. But uh, Stable's going to be coming up, so I think Viper going to be looking to drop down a keep over on that western flank. Yeah, Night Saber is now on the way for Wham. So he's going to play heavy on the Knights department. Then let's not forget Night Sabers and uh, the... Boyar's Fortitude is a combination of upgrades that makes the Roost Knights comparable to the French Knights late game. The problem right now for Vam is that he's only sitting on eight knights, so sure enough, you're going to have a pretty well upgraded knight, but your numbers are quite severely lacking, and you're also up against quite a lot of Arboletrius, so that's not gonna help you. Strelzi would be probably a better one, but Mounted Precision instead by Vam, so he is insisting on staying on Horse Archers instead of switching to Strelzi. We also see roller shutter triggers coming out for him as well as that. I think it's, is it precision aimed? I'm not sure what that upgrade's called. Uh, we can check in on the, on the, uh, on, on, uh, on exactly armory. what that is called. Yeah, on the high armory. Let's take a look. It is called, uh, we've got roller shutter triggers and the, the very first one. It is called banded, banded arms. arms. There you go. So he's going to be running 12.5 range sprinkles in this late game. And we saw earlier today Beastie Cutie on the Rus running a combination of about eight or nine Springles uh, and just kept them out, able to maintain and dominate his French opponent. Uh, so maybe Viper looks to pull out a few more Culverin today. At this point in time, he's only got one in the queue, uh, but I would expect that we would see that number continue to grow uh, throughout the game as uh, it turns out Culverin are actually pretty good in mass as well. Yeah, they are really good in mass. Now you do have those almost fully upgraded horse archers though and you have to respect that. Like those guys get a massive power spike in Imperial with the extra range, the flaming arrows, and they are very tanky. They do dish out a ton of punishment and with the flaming arrows, they also do pretty well against siege weapons. So suddenly that group of horse archers becomes a deadly force. On the other side, Viper does have 21 Royal Knights now in, and he's grabbing Royal Bloodlines as we speak. So he's getting close to those full upgrades. Bovam, securing a lot of map control. And I gotta say, I love how he's playing this one systematically, just crawling up with the towers. For a long time, I was sort of criticizing him for not being very active with the army and not trying to raid. Now I'm starting to like this systematical approach because it is paying off so far. Yeah, he's doing well. And the longer this game goes for Wham, the better it's going to be. Because remember, those Streltsy just trade so damn well into the uh, the Royal Knights. Remember, they've got a very strong melee attack as well. So even in the event they get into melee combat with them, they're going to be able to shred through them completely. But now those Horse Archers moving up with the mounted precision upgrade going to be firing off from a distance towards those units on the backside. The Foot Archer is going to be trying to get their hands in the action as well. I don't know whether we've got elite upgrades. I, I don't see any cool little hoods for these guys. So I don't think we do. It the looks like it's going to be Elite Arbolutrier uh, instead. Yeah. Uh, but Elite Horse Archer is definitely going to be dealing a lot of damage. Uh, no incendiary arrows coming out for either player just yet. Yeah, Culverins are out there for Viper, so he's repelling this push in the middle, and you see this castle is also soon to be lit on fire from Wham. Wham is struggling to deal with that horde of infantry that Viper has right now, but guess what? He's now switching to Streltsy, and I, I think Horse Archers and Streltsy is a combination is a brutal comp because the horse archers are pretty tanky and they dish out a lot of punishment as well and the best response that viper has to the horse archers right now would be just food archers and that is not something that would fare well against all of those streltsy firing from the back line you want to know something better than streltsy plus horse archer streltsy plus streltsy it is a combination <laughs> unrivaled through this game uh, maybe Grenadier plus Grenadier is a little bit stronger. Uh, but uh, yeah, Streltsy are incredible, especially going up against the French. But uh, Wham looking in a pretty decent spot now. He has slowly established himself in this game. He's up to 120 villagers. And this is the part of the game that we often talk about. You know, we, we, we talk about, okay, well, in the event that both players make it to the late game, Wham's going to have the advantage because he's got five relics in the bag. He's got the two sacred sites. He's got 700 gold a minute packing out. But speaking of packing out, all of a sudden, Viper going to be looking to try and take this fight. A lot of Arbor Trio on the backside going to be firing off at plenty of elite royal knights in here as well keep in mind these guys have got their royal bloodline upgrade coming through in fact it's already come through and at the same time he's gonna have to fall back in cindy arrows yet to come through for wham uh streltsy gonna be trying to hold on on this position but viper definitely got a little bit of tempo advantage all of a sudden he's looking to try and hold this position but the streltsy just getting outnumbered outgunned and uh unfortunately gonna have to continue falling back 
But we can see they've done a great job in thinning the numbers of Royal Knights, but they're still out in quite a force. Yeah, one of the problems that Wham is facing is that a lot of his military population is just trebuchets and springholds out there versus for Viper. His entire army, well, excluding two Colverines and a Bombard, is actual human components. So our Bletchley and Knights out there. The good news for Wham is that he's yet to finish with chemistry. So part of the reason why he lost that battle is because his Strozzi weren't fully upgraded and he's still limiting Viper's map control quite heavily. You see Viper is at 19 gold in the bank right now. And on the left side, I love how Wham is just stripping that map barren of resources. This is something that we are talking about a lot in this late game scenario. Just use the map control you have, take all of those resources while you can and then get out of there. There's a gold mine down to the south. How much gold does that that gold mine actually have left on it for Wham? Were we able to take a look at that? Yeah, Wham has both big golds. Oh, look at that, Ooh. 5k. 5, that's juicy. Five that is very juicy. And he's got oh, and he's got a 4k <laughs> back there as well. Oh my oh. lord, Wham is in a great spot. That gold is going to be there for ages for him. And obviously he's already secured up his trade route as well. That's another thing to note is that, you know, th there is a beautiful wall that is in position here. So, you know, in the event that this game does run towards that time, I remember we talked about it a little bit earlier. I, I said, hey, I think this game is going to run for 40 plus minutes. And you said, how long is the game going to go for, Ludicor? Do you remember? Do you remember? Uh, I said 29 minutes. Yeah. So now is the time that you can tell me that I'm dumb. <laughs> <laughs> this is high view you know a lot of people look at high view they're like that's an open map mm -mm -mm. high view is not an open map at all uh players I, I don't know why they always just seem to love taking the game long on high view but we actually just saw crossbow stirrups come through for viper so he's looking to get all those upgrades through uh but just remember that uh despite having slightly more villages that wham's got the economic advantage because of those relics those sacred sites and most importantly he's got access to those big big gold mines viper might even have to start thinking about trading at this point he probably has to because at this pace ram is going to have so much more mineable gold available you see it looks like viper might be able to secure this big gold mine left side for himself but as we discussed ram still has an untouched small gold mine ram still has five thousand gold left on the big gold and he also has five relics plus two sacred sites so ram isn't going to run out of gold for a long 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 time and for viper Having a unit composition that features a lot of gold heavy units like the Arbletrie or the Royal Knights, he also needs gold a lot more, I think, than Vam. Like, worst case scenario for Vam, he can still go for horse archers that don't even cost a single bit of gold. Yeah, yeah, really good point. Uh, I'd be curious to see the guild hall right now for Viper. Obviously, he's still got access uh, to his guild hall to potentially pull out gold. Could be looking at about 3k. No, only 440 on that bad boy. Oh, it's one of those things, isn't it? It's like I can pull it out now and get 2k or I could leave it for a little bit longer and get 10k. But uh, yeah, Viper not going to be pulling that one out. Just not yet. Uh, but uh, I, he might have to move into a bit of a trash composition. Maybe it's a decent idea that he pulls out that gold and looks to get some upgrades uh, for his trash. But uh, it's he's got a final gold mine over towards this west or this eastern flank. He's also got the sacred site out there as well. How much gold has he got left on that gold mine? I think he just now started mining. It's, I would say, 3,000 still. But look at that. Now on the left side, Vam is pushing this one, and Viper has to respond to this. Uh, actually, 2,000 left on that gold mine. And every second that Vam is occupying this left side of the map, that big gold mine is getting more and more drained. And, of course, Viper could technically go for trade, but that is going to be, first of all, time-consuming to transition. Second, he's going to have to consume a lot of his population space, adding traders. So that's definitely something that you want to avoid. It's transitioning to traders in many ways is like transitioning to farms in regards of your food eco. You want to delay it as long as possible, and Vam can delay it so much more than Viper can. Yeah, really good point. He's sitting on so much gold at the moment, and I don't even think he's going to need to go on a traders because he's going to have that passive gold coming through. But obviously, if uh, if the situation does get dire, it's always going to be an option. And of course, the Golden Gate is always available to sell off any excess resources that he's got as well. Uh, he's going to have infinite amounts of food coming through. But uh, slowly but steadily, we see him working down the base of Viper. And Viper going to be looking to push out and dish out some damage here. We can see the Elite Knights making their way through the Stealth Forest. There is plenty of vision here. The Wooden Fortress stands by idly, but we can see the Streltsy on the backside just going to be double timing it all the way up. Look at the damage that they're dealing right now. Just popping all of those Knights, trying their best to, to prevent any deaths coming through on those trebuchets. Unfortunately, one does go down. Culverin on the backside firing off, and the Streltsy actually going to get cleaned up pretty effectively by the mass here from Wham, or rather from Viper. 
decent fight over here for Viper, but is this sufficient? Because the thing is that he lost a lot of those valuable knights, and for Vam, it's no problem to replenish all those strats. You see, in fact, he's pushing on the right side at the same time, and he's still 200 population. Viper is 200 pop as well, but obviously every single knight that goes down is a pain to replenish, and now Viper is facing a different problem. His army is exclusively Arboletria, only a handful of archers remain, so those horse archers once again will reign strong as they flank from the right side. Yeah, now we can see the reinforcements for Wham beginning to come through. The horse archers on the right-hand side doing a lot of work here. Viper going to be trying to push in reinforcements, and we can see he's really starting to struggle with the gold. He's down to less than 1,000 gold. Meanwhile, Wham sitting over on 4,000 gold. He's got plenty of it in the bank and continues pumping out units non-stops. 10 Streltsy, 4 Knights, 3 Springles coming in from behind, and the Trebuchet is still firing off non-stop. Horsemen now going to be coming out towards the front side. I can't see whether they've got their upgrades on. I think they might only be veteran horsemen, and that never feels good to be sending veteran horsemen into a battle up against elite units. Not at all. Vam is down to 53 military population, though, so he's struggling a little bit reproducing or replenishing his army, rather. Viper completely out of gold, so this is the moment where Vam can continue this push and potentially finish this game, because Viper is going to struggle to replenish those expensive units. He just now pulled off the gold from the guild hall, probably around 1,200-ish gold, but that means that Viper, if he can't win a big battle over here, Vam is going to grind him down. Trelsey trying to hold on this position in the middle, but Viper is indeed grinding down. You can see the Arbor of on the backside being pretty efficient uh, in this position, but now four Trebuchet is coming out for Wham, and he's looking to continue dealing out plenty of damage here. So he's got to be careful not to overextend, though, because the units here for Viper looking pretty damn strong. We see a Bombard actually coming out, or a Cannon coming out, looking to dish out some damage as well. Could be looking to focus down that uh, that uh, Wooden Fortress to the south side. There's plenty of Wooden Fortresses up here as well, and the sooner you take them out, the better it's going to be, because those Springwood emplacements just trade out so effectively. You kill out two or three units, and you're going to pay for yourself with it. Viper is completely out of gold over here, so he needs to do something very, very soon. Vam is struggling with the income or resource, or uh, reinforcements rather. He's switching back to knights, interestingly, despite the fact that he's still encountering a ton of Arboletria. But he's at 200 population, Viper is down to 190. Viper is floating quite a lot of stone though, so he could get some map control for himself with a couple of keeps. But Viper needs to start thinking about setting up the trade for himself, which is not something that's a reality right now. and. At this pace, Vam is going to be able to slowly grind down Viper. I still think that Vam needs one great engagement where he vibes out most of Viper's Arboletry is. But if that happens, Vam has this game, I feel. Yeah, it's looking really tough for Viper. He's sitting on 100 gold a minute right now. And that is from the single sacred site that he captures in the top right-hand corner. We can see that not only is uh, is that under threat now because there is an out or a wooden fortress that's got an emplacement on it that is looking to to do more and more damage up in that position. Guild Hall, 220 gold in it. And ideally, you'd like to see him spend all of the remaining gold that he's got on any potential traders. Any traders he can get out right now is really going to help him. There's plenty of gold left on this map, but the only issue is Viper doesn't control it. And speaking of traders, the player adding traders right now is Vam. I love that he's transitioning to that super late game scenario. So he's saying, okay, I'm not 100% sure I can finish this oh. game right now. So I'm going to start prepping for that even later stage. Just stay one step ahead compared to Viper. Now, one thing that Viper has to um, be aware of is that Vam doesn't have stone walls. So that leaves a window open for Viper for a long, long time because he can always send in a bunch of cavalry to burn his way through try a landmark snipe, hit the trade, or something like that. But that option is there for Viper. Whereas for Vam, he would possibly have to go through stone walls over here. He's slowly grinding down Viper's army and deep pushing deeper and deeper into the opponent's base. Yeah, College of Artillery might be up on the menu very, very soon for Wham. He's looking to try and push through. And now going to be standing on top of some production over on the western side of the base. Viper definitely struggling uh, to hold on to the raids that are coming through. And Wham walled up at about, what, minute 15? And now we see Viper struggling. It's minute 38. No walls coming out from him. Just a, at least on this north side, no walls coming out. He's got plenty down towards that south spot. But unfortunately, going to be heading into the farm line, and that's going to cause some idle time here for Viper. He doesn't need to be too concerned. He's got more than 5,000 gold in the bank. The main issue is going to be his gold. And Viper has to pursue all those fully upgraded Roost Knights with Horsemen, so he's not going to take great engagements over here. He either pulls the Arboletria back to clean them up quickly, or he's going to take a lot of time to clean those up. And it looks like he pulled back the Arboletria, but that opens up the possibility for Wham to push in deep. And this is exactly what Wham wanted to accomplish with this detachment of Knights. 
he knows that those horsemen will struggle to clean up that many knights. So either the Arbalatria do get pulled back and then I push the front or they don't. And in that case, I will just shatter Viper's food eco. Yeah, Trevor Shea's under threat towards that northern side. You can see on the backside, the Springlet's going to be able to take out the Culverin. Very effective with their 12.5 range. Just a slight advantage, but the Streltsy holding on on that front side. A couple of horsemen going to be running in, but you can't help but feel terrible for them because they are going to get absolutely shredded. Speaking of shredded on that backside, we can see there were plenty of horsemen that were surrounding that single knight, but that's just the consequence of those raids. It draws away all of these extra units that could be on the front line, could be pushing back. But unfortunately, not going to be the case here for Viper. You can see that he's probably got close to about 20 units there, which would just be making such a useful effort over here. There's plenty of trebuchets to be targeting, lots of streltsy, plenty of springlords that he could be taking out. But unfortunately, he's just not in the right spot. Yeah, Vim has insane firepower on this battlefield. He's got four trebuchets to level any building to the ground that he encounters. He's got nine Springholds, which can dish out punishment from a long distance. And he also has quite a lot of Streltsy over here. He could use some manpower to this army, to be honest, because as you see, he's being overrun by cavalry. But Viper now in full commitment mode. If he loses this battle, I don't think that he's going to have a window to build another big army like this. Well, that's just it. You know, when this game started out, I said, well, it's highly likely it's going to be a 47 minute game. And we are slowly making our way towards that mark. Viper is grinding down Wham all of a sudden, and he's using Trash to do it. He's got Arbalatria on the backside. A couple of Bombards, or, or Cannons rather, going to be turning their attention towards it. Viper's got plenty of stone in the bank if he wants to get a keep out, but it looks like Wham's going to be the one trying to drop it down here instead. Viper managing to take out all the trebuchets, and all of a sudden, Wham looking like he might be the one that's on shaky ground. He's got plenty of resources, but does he have the APM to keep up with Viper in the late game? We can see the Springlord's now firing down over on those Royal Cannons. First one going to be going down, second one manages to scoot itself away, but now all of a sudden, the reinforcements for Wham manage to make their way out onto the field. The Arbler Tree are going to have to make their way back. The Guild Hall on 420 gold. Nice. Nice. <laughs> Uh, v Viper did level quite a lot of buildings to the ground over here and he took down so much army but this is where being able to replenish those forces comes into play. You see Viper actually had to pull off the resources I believe from that guild hall to get to that 500 he has right now and Ram he's more than happy throwing away units at this point just grinding send wave after wave of Streltsy because you have a much easier time replenishing your forces than Viper can. 200 population against 150. Viper is running out of juice and Ram isn't going to go down to 3-0 here. He managed to push pretty far over onto Wham's side, but now it's starting to look very shaky for Viper. He's got 113 villagers, but unfortunately he has round out. There is absolutely no juice in the bank at all. 232 food in the bank, 21 gold, 5K of, of uh, wood, but wood is gonna be not what you need right now to make military. It is gonna be the other resources, unfortunately. Uh, he's got plenty of units coming out, and Viper ain't the kind of guy that's going to give up, but he is trying to stretch this game out, trying to whittle down his opponent. I don't think there's any possible way that he comes back into this, though. Look at the reinforcements for Wham. They're just looking so help, so healthy. Yeah, the reinforcements, wave after wave of uh, forces coming in here. Viper now is down to just a bench of Arboletria here. But as the Strelzi grind those down, Viper is going to struggle to rebuild those even, because even those units cost gold over here. Viper rallying all the horsemen to try and take down the spring gold. Strelzi numbers depleted on the battlefield here, so Viper not going to tap out easily over here. But as the reinforcements join this battle once again, Viper should be pushed back into his base. Yeah, all right. Well, it, it, it seems like Viper has definitely been out of this since minute 15. I don't know why we are still here. Uh, chat chat is definitely suggesting that this uh, this game should have been called at the 15 minute mark. Uh, I mean, Viper's put up a valiant effort. I got to be honest with you. Uh, but the, the massive of archers here are going to be very difficult to overcome. The fact that the Streltsy are just out in such fierce numbers. But Wham is down to 700 gold. So Viper is slowly grinding him down. Yeah, Viper is slowly being ground down. Remember, Vam is replenishing his, or well, rather replacing his eco with traders as well. So sustainability is also on the side of Vam. Even if the map is completely barren of resources, there is going to be trade working for Vam, and Viper is nowhere close to that. So at some point, Viper is going to have to start setting that up, and he's nowhere close to that. He's constantly struggling with population, down to 150, and his population is dropping rather than growing. Viper is going to tap out, and Vam takes game number three. There you go. You listen to chat and all of a sudden good game gets called. I don't know why chat just didn't call that at 15 minutes. It would have been so much easier, but good game gets called. Viper going to be tapping out Wham, actually taking a victory there. So very, very, I wouldn't necessarily say surprising. I mean, Wham's made it through to the top eight. Uh, so you know he's a pretty competent player, but at the same time, he ground down Viper very well, very methodically. That was something that we saw come out. And take a look at that game time, Litacore. 45 minutes.
Smack bang, baby. On the money. <laughs> Smart little coster out there. First time Viper loses a game with French in Golden League. And that is come, it is coming at the hands of Wham over here. Great game by Wham. He played a very methodical and very safe game. Maybe overly cautious even. Because you could see that the way that he has played, he didn't, really didn't want to make any mistakes. He really didn't want to take any risks in here. And in the end, he just secured enough map control and just ground on the opponent. Very much like a beastly style approach that we have seen over here. Just slow and methodical game, not being worried about dragging this out to be an hour, an hour and a half long game. Yeah, yeah, did, did a, 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 a great job there. I mean, he still grinded for a long time. Uh, uh, you know, as, as we mentioned before, game was over at 15 minutes. Not sure why it kept being played after that point. But no, in, in all seriousness, this seriousness uh, Viper definitely, you know, tried his best there. It was just a tough spot for him. You know,